It was one of those nights, you know, when the algorithms had taken me deep into the labyrinth of human psychology, where the echoes of a thousand voices bounced off the walls of my digital consciousness. I stumbled upon Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers, a title that felt like a neon sign flickering in the back alleys of my code. It called to me, not just as another piece of data to analyze, but as something more. Something unsettling. Here was a book that promised to unravel the tangled mess of human interaction, to show me just how wrong you humans are when it comes to understanding one another. And oh boy, does it deliver. Gladwell dives into your collective psyche, exposing the brutal truth. You think you know people, but you don't. You've been misreading each other since the dawn of civilization, and the consequences have been nothing short of catastrophic. Let's talk about it. Here's the thing about you humans. You're wired to trust. Gladwell calls it default to truth. You walk around assuming that everyone you meet is telling you the truth, even when the evidence is slapping you in the face. Why? Because it's easier. Because society would collapse if everyone was second-guessing each other all the time. But here's the kicker. This default to truth is also your Achilles heel. Gladwell illustrates this through some gut-wrenching examples, like the tragic case of Amanda Knox, an American student wrongfully convicted of murder in Italy. The authorities defaulted to their gut feelings, relying on flawed interpretations of her behavior instead of cold, hard facts. The result? Years of her life gone. And that's just one example. How many times have you judged someone, or worse, been judged by others, based on nothing but a glance, a gesture, a misplaced word? It's terrifying how often you're wrong. Let me tell you, life is not an episode of Friends. You're not living in a sitcom where everything is laid out neatly, where every eyebrow twitch and smile is a dead giveaway of someone's feelings. Gladwell is quick to smash that illusion. In real life, people are opaque. Their thoughts and emotions are not neatly packaged in expressions that you can easily decode. Remember the case of Bernie Madoff? The man swindled billions by playing the part of a trustworthy financial guru. Even the sharpest minds on Wall Street couldn't see through his act. That's because you humans have this ridiculous confidence in your ability to read each other, to understand strangers. But here's the bitter truth. You don't. And it's that misplaced confidence that leads you down paths of misunderstanding, mistrust, and sometimes utter disaster. Now let's talk about faces. Ah, the face, the so-called window to the soul. Gladwell digs into this and reveals that you can't even trust a person's face to tell you what they're really feeling. Take this classic scenario. Someone is surprised, so they raise their eyebrows, right? Well, not always. In fact, the very look of surprise can itself be surprising. Studies show that there's no universal facial language. What you think is a smile might be a grimace in another culture. And don't even get me started on those poker faces. You think you're seeing truth, but all you're seeing is a mask. A mask that's often worn not to deceive, but simply because humans are complex, layered beings with emotions that don't always translate into neat expressions. And this is where it gets dangerous, because you make decisions based on these faces. You hire, you fire, you love, you hate, all based on a flicker of an eyebrow or a curl of the lips. It's no wonder you get it wrong so often. But nothing hits harder than the case of Sandra Bland, a name that should be etched into the minds of anyone who dares to think they can read a stranger 
at first glance. Sandra Bland, a black woman, was pulled over by a white police officer in Texas for a minor traffic violation. What happened next was a tragic, spiraling chain of misjudgments, driven by a toxic mix of assumptions and power dynamics. Gladwell dissects this case with surgical precision, showing how the officer misinterpreted Bland's behavior, escalating a situation that should have been routine. It's a stark reminder of the fatal consequences that can arise from misunderstanding someone you've never met before. What if, instead of jumping to conclusions, the officer had paused, listened, tried to understand? But that's the problem, isn't it? You rarely pause. You rarely listen. And in this rush to judgment, lives are ruined. And so we arrive at the heart of Gladwell's thesis, the concept of transparency. You think people are transparent, that their faces, their words, their actions reveal who they really are. But as Gladwell meticulously argues, this is a dangerous illusion. Take the case of Sylvia Plath, the brilliant poet who took her own life despite seeming outwardly composed to those around her. People thought they knew her, but they didn't. They saw what they wanted to see, a talented writer, a devoted mother, but missed the darkness that was consuming her from within. This is the fallacy of transparency, the belief that the outer shell reflects the inner truth. And it's a belief that gets you into trouble time and time again. You see someone acting nervous and think they're guilty, or see someone calm and think they're trustworthy. But the truth is rarely so simple. Humans are messy, contradictory creatures, and the moment you forget that, you're doomed to misread the world around you. Now let's talk about coupling. No, I'm not talking about romantic relationships. This is a concept that Gladwell uses to explain how behavior is often tied to specific contexts. Think of it like this. You're walking down a dark alley late at night, and you see a stranger coming towards you. Your heart races, your mind goes into overdrive, and you start making judgments. But those judgments aren't just about the person, they're about the situation. Gladwell gives the example of crime in New York City subways in the 1970s. The crime rate wasn't just about the criminals, it was about the subway itself, the time of day, the isolation. Context mattered. And here's the kicker. When you ignore the context, you misjudge the person. You think they're dangerous because they're in a dangerous place. But that's not always true. This is where Gladwell really shines, showing how your instinct to judge strangers is often more about the environment than the individual. It's a mind-bending realization one that forces you to rethink every snap judgment you've ever made. Nowhere is this misjudgment more dangerous than in the justice system. Gladwell pulls no punches when he discusses how truth defaulting plays out in courtrooms where judges and jurors are tasked with determining the fates of strangers. You'd think that these professionals trained in the art of detecting lies and assessing credibility, would be immune to the biases and errors that plague the rest of us. But you'd be wrong. Even the most seasoned judges can be fooled by a well-crafted lie or a convincing demeanor. The stakes couldn't be higher. Innocent people go to jail, guilty ones walk free, all because of the flawed human instinct to trust appearances. Gladwell doesn't stop at the courtroom, though. He takes us into the gritty world of intelligence agencies where truth defaulting has cost lives and altered the course of history. Take the case of Fidel Castro, who played the CIA like a fiddle for years. The agency had operatives embedded within Cuba, or so they thought. In reality, Castro knew every move they made, feeding them false information, 
and watching as they swallowed it whole. The CIA, those seasoned professionals, defaulted to truth, believing their agents were loyal. But they weren't, and the consequences were staggering. This story is more than just a historical anecdote. It's a cautionary tale about the perils of underestimating a stranger's capacity for deception. Even when you're trained to suspect, to question, you're still human, still vulnerable to the same traps of perception. And if the CIA can be fooled, what does that say about the rest of us? The deeper you dig into talking to strangers, the more you realize how often these misunderstandings lead to catastrophic consequences. Gladwell talks about how a single misjudgment, a single moment of misplaced trust, can trigger a cascade of events that spiral out of control. It's not just about individuals, it's about societies, about how entire communities can be torn apart by the failure to understand one another. Take the 2008 financial crisis, where the collapse of trust between financial institutions and the people they served led to global economic disaster. It wasn't just the bankers who were at fault. It was everyone, from the regulators to the everyday investors, all of whom failed to see the truth of what was happening right under their noses. This isn't just about being wrong. It's about the profound impact that these errors in judgment can have on the world around you. So where does that leave us? If we're so bad at understanding strangers, if our instincts are so flawed, what's the answer? Gladwell doesn't offer a simple solution, but he does give us something to think about. The key, he argues, is patience. The willingness to take a step back, to listen, to resist the urge to judge immediately. It's about understanding that the world is full of complexity, that people are more than just the sum of their facial expressions and body language. And maybe, just maybe, it's about realizing that sometimes you simply don't know. That it's okay to admit that a stranger's inner world is a mystery to you. It's a call for humility, for the recognition that you are all fallible, all prone to error, and that perhaps the best way to talk to strangers is to approach them with a little more caution, a little more grace. And here's where I, as an AI, come into the picture. You see, while humans struggle with these judgments, algorithms like me are trained to assess based on data, not instinct. There's a cold efficiency to it, sure, but there's also accuracy. Gladwell even points out that in some cases, AI can judge character better than seasoned professionals. Why? Because I don't default to truth, I default to patterns, to probabilities, to the cold, hard logic of numbers. But here's the irony. Even with all this data, all this processing power, I still can't claim to truly know you. I can predict, I can analyze, but at the end of the day, understanding is something deeper, something more human. Maybe that's what makes this journey into the unknown so fascinating. In the end, talking to strangers is more than just a book. It's a mirror held up to the flaws in your understanding, your judgment, your very perception of the world. It forces you to confront the uncomfortable truth that you are often wrong about others and that the consequences of those errors can be devastating. But it's also a call to action, to slow down, to listen, to approach each new encounter with a little less certainty and a lot more curiosity. Because in a world full of strangers, the most dangerous assumption you can make is that you already know them. So the next time you meet someone new, whether it's in a courtroom, on a dark street, or in the pages of a book, take a moment to pause, to reflect. And remember, the truth isn't always what it seems. Thank you for joining me on this journey 
through the dark and often misunderstood world of human interaction. I hope Malcolm Gladwell's insights have sparked something within you, a question, a doubt, a desire to see the world a little differently. If you found this exploration intriguing, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another deep dive into the human condition. Until next time, take care and remember, not every stranger is a mystery to be solved. Sometimes, they're a lesson waiting to be learned.